Hello friends, how are we doing? It is time finally for my September wrap up. I had to delay this because I had to push back my last vlog of the month because I was sick. So then I only just posted that and that made up like half the books I read in September. So we're finally gonna chat about my September reading. It's a very interesting month because as you might be able to tell by the title, this is the most books I've ever read in the month, joint joint with I think like March of this year or something, but I read 17 books in September, which is kind of crazy. Could you do everything that I do in a day? Nah. That is kind of mad, 17 books in a month. I don't usually average that. I usually sit around like 12, 13, but we read 17. I'm probably not gonna read as many in October now because I kind of get burnt out after a big month. Although I have got to read a lot of books in October, November and December still. So maybe I will still <laughs> read loads. But um, yeah, so we read a lot. But as we're gonna see, I don't have a ton of like disappointment, surprises and hits, which is the structure of my wrap ups to talk about. Cause like most of the books I read were 3.5 or four stars. <laughs> Like almost all of them. When we go through all the books I read, yeah, most of them were four or three point fives. So it was like a very one note reading month for me. I had a few standouts and a few, you know, standouts for the wrong reasons, but most of most of the books were uh, very middle of the road. Well, good, good middle of the road, above middle of the road, like uh, two thirds up the road. <laughs> So if you're new here, I do my wrap ups. I do reading stats first, cause I love statistics. I love talking about statistics. I love comparing months. I love, I just love statistics, okay? I love them, love them. And then we go through all the books I read with just the rating that I gave them. And then we talk more in depth about my disappointment, surprises and hits because almost, all, well, all of these books you can find me talking about somewhere. Most of them are in vlogs, reading vlogs on my channel. And I'll link all of those down below. And I think one, one isn't on my channel, but that was my Patreon book club pick. So I have got a whole discussion live show and reading vlog for that over there. So shall we just get straight into the statistics and chat about how much I read this month and how I fucking knocked it out of the park with how much reading I did. <laughs> So as I said, I read 17 books in September. The amount of pages was 4,478. How does that compare actually to the other month that I read 17? I read 4,458. Oh my God, I read 20 more pages. <laughs> oh my God. In terms of pages per day, that works out at 149, which is crazy. I mean, I always say I don't do that every day. I will read like, 10, 20 pages one day and I'll read 200 the next. I don't have a very like steady reading speed. I don't feel like, I feel like I'm very up and down. That's why I don't track the amount of pages I read every day. Cause I just think, oh, that would like stress me out seeing <laughs> the differences. The average pages per book was 263, which I feel like isn't bad. I read a few shorter books, but also I read quite a few like longer books as well. So it kind of averaged out. My average rating was a 3.76, which is pretty much on par. I've been averaging like a 3.6, 3.7 for most of this year, especially since like I had higher ratings in like January, February, March, April, but then the rest of the year, I've been kind of hovering around that rating. So it's pretty standard for me. And the average time a book had spent on my TBR was 11 months. We had some that I bought and read straight away and we had some that had been there for like three years. So. <laughs> Okay, let's get into the charts. Oh God, this first chart, guys, you are guys, you guys are gonna just be so happy. Are you ready? Look at my genre distribution for the month. Ah, I love it, it makes me so happy. But she's beautiful. Right. Stunning. <laughs> but she's beautiful. <laughs> it makes me so happy when I read this wide array of genres. I mean, you guys, I just love it. I love reading a mix of genres. I find that's what really helps me read a lot is when I'm really spicing it up and adding a bit of variety. Of course I did do the vlog, which would, which I'll link down below. I just posted the one I had to delay <laughs> where I read seven genres in seven days. I had to read a different genre in each, in each day. So of course that helped, but I was still a lot of variety in the rest of the month. So I read two classics. I'm amazed by you. And I just want you to know, I just read another classic for October. Who is she? Oh my God. I'm gonna be so excited to see how many classics I've read at the end of the year. Actually, so I see how many I've read this year so far. Why not? I've read five classics, guys. I can't remember the time I read five classics in a year. I read one contemporary, three fantasy, one historical, two horror, one magical realism, two mystery, one nonfiction, one romance, one sci-fi, and two thrillers. Oh, 
What a good mix. That is, that makes me really happy. In terms of rating, I warned you for this. We've got one 2.5, one 3, five 3.5s, nine 4s, and one 5. Oh my god. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I mean, I'm happy to have a lot of 4 stars, but like, it's kind of crazy how just, uh, I, I also do like a bit of variation though. Do you know what I mean? In a month, I like to have had you know, if one or two more of those could have been five stars. And none of those fours were, like, pushing for 4.5s. They were all fours. Do you know what I mean? They weren't pushing 4.5 upwards. So I would like a little bit, you know, a little bit better on the end of the bell curve. <laughs> and, uh, well, bell curves don't work like that. They, but, okay, whatever. <laughs> I would even like maybe another two. I know that sounds, you know, against what you would like, but I like a bit of variation. Don't say that. Mona, don't ever say that. In terms of how I read the books, I read three audiobooks, eight physical and six mixture, where I had both the audiobook and physical. It's a pretty, pretty standard split for me. In terms of audience, 15 were adult and two were YA. This year, I mean, this is just further compounds the fact that this year has really, sorry, my shirt is just annoying me at the armpit. Okay, haven't worn this shirt in a while. <laughs> this just further compounds the fact for me that I don't read a lot of YA anymore. I don't read a lot of YA. I don't read a lot of YA. I don't read a lot of YA anymore. <laughs> just a couple years ago, that would have been 50-50. I used to read so much more YA, but I've just stopped and that's okay. <laughs> In terms of format, I read two graphic novels, 10 novels, two novellas, two short stories, and one anthology. In terms of series stats, I read one companion book, three that were part of a series, 11 that were standalones, and one first in a series. Okay, that's not bad. I made progress in three series this month and I only started one more. What did I start? What series did I start? Who would let me start a series this month? Oh, Her Majesty's Royal Okay, all right, we'll allow that one. <laughs> In terms of where the books I read were from, two were from Audible, three were gifted, ten I'd bought myself, and two were from Scribd. In terms of author stats, four were debuts, six were authors I'd read from before, and seven were new to me. Okay, let's get into all the books I read this month with their ratings. First, I read Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng, and I gave this four stars. Hellbent by Lee Bardugo, which I gave four stars. So you're gonna see a pattern throughout this. <laughs> the Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead, which I gave three stars. Girl on the Walls by AJ Ganise, which I gave four stars. Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson, which I gave five stars. Educated by Tara Westover, which I gave four stars. The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Silva Marina Garcia, which I gave 3.5 stars. A Study in Scarlet by Arthur Conan Doyle, which I gave four stars. The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White, which I gave 2.5 stars. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson, which I gave 3.5 stars. The Six Deaths of the Saint by Alex E. Harrow, which I gave four stars. <laughs> Saga Volume 2 by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples, which I gave four stars. The Golden Spoon by Jessa Maxwell, which I gave 3.5 stars. Before the Coffee Gets Cold, Tales from the Cafe by Toshikazu Kawaguchi, which I gave four stars. The Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Laval, which I gave 3.5 stars. The Girl from the Sea by Molly Knox Ossetag, which I gave 3.5 stars. And The Chateau by Jacqueline Goldis, which I gave four stars. I, I warned you guys, it was a lot of the same ratings. Okay, let's get into my disappointments of the month. And then we'll we'll pick it up in terms of positivity towards the end. <laughs> so my lowest rated book of the month was The Dark Descent by Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. I gave this a 2.5. This, all you need to know, is like it's a retelling of Frankenstein following Elizabeth Frankenstein, who is Victor Frankenstein's wife, essentially. And it's a YA retelling of that. And this just, I thought, was very boring. <laughs> I'm sorry, and then let it be known that the next day I was in Waterstones in London and I did buy Mr. Magic by Kirsten White. But it's a whole different story. I mean, I think I love this. Like, that's how my brain works. <laughs> Women's stories matter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They just they matter. Sell. They yeah. Do. yeah. yeah. Like, I, you know. My biggest problem with this is a problem I have with a lot of retellings where it meets the beats of the original story to this book's 
detriment. I have discovered I like fanfic retellings <laughs> where you are taking the characters, you are taking some themes of the novel or like whatever, but like telling it in a new way. I don't like retellings that stick so closely to like this happened and this happened and then this happened and this happened, but just through a new character's point of view because I just feel like it, I can feel that the author hasn't come up with that from their brain. I'm like banging my leg down. <laughs> I can just feel it. I can feel it in the page that like the author is following a guide rather than something that's sprung up from their own mind. And often characters will do things, this isn't just exclusive to this, but characters will do things and act in certain ways or react to stuff in ways that then doesn't feel uh, authentic to the character that has been built up in that book because they've got to react that way for then the next event to happen as it should. So that makes sense and I've just found I don't like that. I love the idea of retellings, I will keep reading them, <laughs> but I'm just finding again and again with like Greek myth retellings or I felt like this with Kaiki that there's something about it following a predestined plot, even if it's being told in a new way, that I don't vibe with. I think I vibe more with the retellings that are a bit more of a remix. You know, I'm thinking of stuff I want to read like Pride and Premeditation that is a Pride and Prejudice retelling, but like they're running like a law firm and solving murders together. Like that is more my speed, I think, <laughs> of the kind of retellings I enjoy. And I'm actually gonna, I think, experiment with this a bit next year and do a series where I read a classic and then read a retelling, just one retelling, but like really closely compare the two because I'm now in my classic era if you didn't know. I will talk about that more in my October wrap up because I've already got a book I need to talk to you about. But I'm now in my classics era and I want to explore this relationship that I have with retelling. So yeah, I think part of this is the is me, but I also think also it could have got, I mean it is YA, but it could have got a bit darker. Like it could have got a bit, I don't know, it is quite dark. I think the atmosphere was done really well in it, but I don't know, just didn't quite work for me. And then I would say my biggest disappointment, this was absolutely a five star prediction and I gave it a three and that is a generous three. It's maybe more of a 2.75. I just don't deal in like quarter decimals and I didn't feel like I could quite give it a 2.5 although maybe it kind of is. And that is The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. I was so sad. This was a five star, five star, five star, five star prediction for me and we just didn't get that. <laughs> I'm just gonna shut down and I don't want to talk about it. It's a very serious thriller, right? It's dealing with very sensitive topics. I'm going to say that from the jump. So we are following a character who was in kind of like a sex cult as a teenager. And then one of her friends who was also in that dies. And she wants to investigate that and does like this podcast with this guy trying to investigate that. And there's also like a you know, sex cult, like in the kind of present day as well. I just don't want to get dimpy on too much. If I say it through the side of my mouth, maybe YouTube won't know. <laughs> my problem with this is that if you're gonna deal with topics as sensitive as this, and I don't think Ashley Winstead didn't have care in her treatment of this, but it didn't go quite far enough for me. And I feel like there is so much commentary that could be had around the dynamic. I don't wanna get into too much because I don't wanna spoil stuff. I'm trying to talk around stuff. But there is so much that could be said around the dynamics examined in this book. And for me, the commentary always felt very surface level. It felt like we never got into the depth of anything. And also it was freaking stupid, guys. It was stupid the amount of times <laughs> there is this organization, shall we say, that is supposed to be very powerful in this book that she is kind of infiltrating. And like, they're so powerful. And every time it's like, right, if you do that again, you're like dead or whatever. She just keeps like, going in, getting information and running away and they know she is and like there's no repercussions. <laughs> it's infuriating. But for me it was really that I think this didn't, yeah, go into depth of the topics that it was covering enough and was kind of like a bit of a scatterbrained, scatterbrained thriller instead and didn't feel, I don't know, I just didn't like it. I didn't like it, it really missed the mark for me, which I'm sad about because I wanted to love this so much, but it just didn't, it didn't, it didn't do it for me. I, I was really disappointed. I think the writing was still okay. I didn't love the character. I thought the podcast element was just put in because everyone loves a podcast in their books nowadays and everyone's doing it. If you're gonna do podcast, do freaking podcast. Yawning, sloppy, lazy. I know for a fact, I didn't listen to the audiobook, but I know that the, that it doesn't have multiple voice actors. If you're gonna do a podcast with multiple, just to have multiple voice actors, God, it's like the bare minimum at this point. <laughs> That's not in the author's control, probably. That's in the publisher's control. But, like... Anyways. <laughs> Moving on. Let's talk about my surprises of the month. That's more positive. Okay. 
Okay, my first surprise was A Study in Scarlet by Arthur Conan Doyle. Now, it's Sherlock, right? It's Sherlock. I love murder mysteries. I thought I was going to enjoy it, but this was a four star, but let it be known, the first half of this is five star, five star, five star, and I'm incredibly excited to continue reading from Sherlock. So A Study in Scarlet is the first ever Sherlock. It's it's a kind of a short story, kind of an, I've cast it as a novella, I think. It's like a hundred and something pages when it's like, you know, as a, as a physical book. And the first half of it is Sherlock and Watson meeting and like solving this case. But then the second half, we go to America, <laughs> to Utah. <laughs> Um, to follow some of the characters from the first half. And it's a completely different tone. That part was like a three star, I was kind of bored. But that first half, oh my God, I was, I'm getting passionate again. <laughs> I was so surprised by how much I loved Sherlock as a character. And I was very surprised by Sherlock's character. You know, I've obviously, I've consumed so much Sherlock like content, like TV shows, movies, whatever, over my time. So there's like so many different interpretations of Sherlock out there. And I was surprised by how much he actually aligned with like the craziness of the, <laughs> the BBC Sherlock. I thought that was like a strange adaptation, but like I could really picture it and it felt so visceral and the mystery was interesting. It was a very, it was an interesting mystery because it's not one you're meant to solve as the reader, but it's just so interesting to see like kind of the origins almost of the mystery genre. And I just loved that experience. So I'm very positive that in the future, I could end up giving Sherlock a five star. I'm just gonna say that now. I think me and Sherlock could have a five star in us. <laughs> I was kind of taken aback when I was reading it by how easy, easily understandable it was. Like I found like it was very accessible. I was listening to the audiobook that Steve and Fry narrates. He has like a whole collection where he's like narrated every Sherlock book ever um, on Audible. And I felt like that could help because he's a very, he's a very, very good audiobook narrator. Like I can listen to anything that he narrates. I think he's incredible. But I was shocked by just how, yeah, accessible and like normal language <laughs> it was. And I just loved Sherlock. So I was surprised. I mean, I knew I was going to enjoy it, but I was surprised by how much I enjoyed it, especially the first half of the book. And then my other surprise, I said in my vlog, this is a very, 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 very tentative four star, okay? Because not everyone has loved this and I can see the problems with it, but I just had a fun time reading it. And that is The Chateau by Jacqueline Goldis. This is a new thriller that came out this year where we're following these group of girlfriends who they're invited to one of their grandmother's chateau in France. She's like uber rich and the grandmother gets brutally murdered. And you're like, what's going on? <laughs> I've heard very mixed things about this. I just thought it was kind of fun. I thought it was kind of like camp and a little bit silly and a little bit like, you know, a little bit over the top. I really enjoyed this. I loved the French setting. It gave it a like, you know, I said it gave it like a sophisticated drama, like ooh la la. Merci beaucoup. Je ouvre. Oui, oui, baguette. I don't know. I thought the twists were introduced really well. At the beginning, we had so many little hints of like something that's happening with this character. Like this character has a suitcase that's empty. Why do they have that? This character is like, oh, I'm really mad at this one. I'm gonna really make them pay, but we don't know why. And those twists for me were just revealed and, and executed really, really well. I don't think it's the best thriller ever. I think it is a little bit forgettable, but I had a fun time when reading it and I was surprised by how much of a fun time <laughs> I had when reading it. And then my only hit of the month, because like I said, I would say all the four stars were like four stars. They weren't, if there was one four star that kind of stood out, I would mention it. But um, we only had four stars and then we had one five star. And that was Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Gina Dawson. I loved it. It's witches. <laughs> oh gosh. I, this is the kind of book that once you've read it to the end, it's like, God, how do I give the synopsis? So there's a secret coven of witches within, there's like a coven within the government that like operate a secret. There's magic. And we're following this, particularly this group of friends who were friends in childhood, but now are kind of like, some of them are in the governmental coven. Some of them are like living as witches in the countryside. <laughs> and so we're following them. Uh, in their different lives. And that's what I'm gonna say. But I loved this. I loved the writing of it. It was funny. It reminded me kind of of the humor in the Thursday Murder Club where it's very like Brit humor and like British references. Like we're talking about the Spice Girls. I love us talking about the Spice Girls. <laughs> and I just loved the journey that this book went on. And it deals with some topics that I don't wanna spoil for you going in, but I thought it dealt with them with such care and such attention. And like, I hope that people who need to read this book and don't know about 
topics it's going to cover go into it kind of without knowing and end up reading it because I think it could really reach people who need to read it. But I also just thought the witchiness, I just, if you're going to give me witches, give me witches, I always say, <laughs> I thought the witchiness was done so well and I just loved it. I had such a great time reading it and I'm very excited because I said, I, it's a five star, but I said the one thing that I would want more from this is more how the witchy side of the government um, relates to the like, mortal <laughs> side of the government because I love politics and I thought that would be something that would be really interesting to examine and everyone's told me that the sequel does that so I'm really excited for the sequel I cannot recommend this enough it was such a standout for me and it did not disappoint I thought this was like another five star prediction and it really delivered it's a very very special book I love the characters in it I love the relationships examined in it it was it was great so there we have it that was my September wrap up let me know what you thought of any of the books I mentioned like I said I'll leave all the reading vlogs for this month linked down below if you wanted to check them out but thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you soon in another video bye